I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, to and, the, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. all. Thank you. At this point, uh, the Board of Trustees will hear comments, presentations, or requests on matters listed on this agenda. Speakers are requested to give their names and addresses. Time limit for speakers is three minutes. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. The board reserves the right to limit presentations. This meeting is being recorded. Do we have anybody requesting uh, public comment, Raymond? Not at this time, no. No? Okay. No raised hands, nothing? Nope. Okay. So then we move on to action informational items. McPherson and Jacobson presentation regarding the search and selection of a superintendent of schools. So, uh, Madam President, we've invited um, Mr. Uh, ben Johnson from McPherson and Jacobson. They are the contact, and he's represented here in Riverside County, and he is on the screen with us, and he will be sharing. There you go. There's Mr. Johnson. He is ready to share his slides, so we'll turn the time over to him. That's great. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Well, uh, welcome, board, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules, and on a Friday at that, um, greatly appreciate it. So my name is Ben Johnson. I'm uh, a consultant with McPherson and Jacobson. As you probably know, um, CSBA went through a similar process that you're going through tonight to vet um, search firms to really provide an additional service to boards. Um, and we were basically selected. This is our second time going through that process um, as the preferred firm for um, CSBA members. And, and I'll go into a little bit of um, detail as we go through the presentation, but we really truly work for boards. We, we don't work for superintendents. We don't have a cadre of candidates that we um, kind of move from district to district. We really are, are intentional about our service. And one of the reasons why McPherson was selected um, was the fact that our, our searches are really designed to be transparent and have good community engagement. Um, but knowing that you represent um, your community and your constituents, and this is the most important thing that you do as trustees. Uh, brief background on myself, uh, um, I was a school board member in Alvord in Riverside County for 21 years. Um, I actually recognize some of you from CSBA conferences. Um, and the unique thing about McPherson's, uh, we actually have, um, when we do searches, usually a board member and a, and a sitting or a retired superintendent on our process. And it doesn't mean that any process is any better or worse than another, but um, we do find that you have a different lens when you have a person that served like you do as a board member and someone that served as the CEO of a school district that's, that's been a superintendent. So that, that's, that's really kind of our model. And this is a quote from Vernon Billy, who's the CEO of CSBA. Hiring the right executive to serve as your superintendent is critical for any school. Our partnership with McPherson and Jacobs provides districts the new and effective resource for that purpose. So although other firms will say they have um, relationships with um, CSBA, there is a difference between us being the, the firm that has been identified as the preferred firm for that search process. And this is you, but I, I think what's really critical is your vision. Um, and as we go through the process, we will keep your vision, your mission statement. Um, but then when we get into really the work of selecting your superintendent, what are the criteria that you wanted your next leader? And that changes as you have different issues and challenges um, that you're facing. And, and I will say the process that we've gone through um, looks different for every district. We, we try to make sure that we bring best practices we really design our, our search process with specific your needs and for your community. Um, we are a nationwide search firm. So that's a, a little bit of a difference. Um, although I will say when we do searches in California, the majority of candidates do come from California. Um, we're obviously diverse in every way you can think about it. I already talked about the roles and responsibilities, but also that 30% of our consultants are minorities or females. 
and um, more than half, 64%, have a doctor degree. The other big piece that we, we know is important is sustainability. And so these numbers continue to shift, but about three and a half percent um, is almost what we're seeing right now for a tenure of superintendents. And um, during COVID, we haven't run an analysis, but that number is actually shrinking. It, it, it's closer to 3% and the turnover is high um, for superintendents taking different opportunities, but that's not good for you. That's not good for your students. It's important that you have sustainability in your district to make sure that the vision and um, goals you set forth um, work, right? And, and it takes time. You need someone that's gonna hit the ground running, but you also need someone that's gonna carry those things forward. So 80% um, of our superintendents are still in the position for five years, 55% um, really past that 10 year mark and 41% at 15 years. And, and so, and part of the reason why we know that we're affecting this area is because we spent a lot of time on the front end really building that criteria and making sure that when we're looking for a candidate, we're not waiting around for candidates to come forward. We are actually being intentional about people that we know, people that could be current superintendents, people that could be assistant superintendents that may fill that criteria, criteria you need for your district. Um, it's all about students. That's why all of you are here. That's why you serve as board members. It, it definitely is not for the money. It definitely isn't for the prestige. I don't know any board member that um, does this for any length of period that really doesn't understand that every decision they make, everything that happens to that dais and in your community is all about students. And so we are focused on that. Um, and we are, I'll speak for myself, and I, and I make sure as we talk through our process, even when things, if you do select us, even when things get tense, because they do when you're going through this process, if you haven't been through it before, because you become passionate about candidates, we, we always remind ourselves what's in the best interest of students. That, that's why we all do it. That, that's why I'm still involved with um, this process, because leadership matters. And although the important things that happen in the classroom um, with, our, with our teachers and our staff are important, what makes the most impact in student success is the governance team. Your leadership and your action with your CEO is what makes the biggest difference on student success. And so we constantly are focused on that as we go through the process. Um, again, I think I've talked about this, we work for you. Um, we will give you feedback about what we think may work best, um, but it's your search. And so, um, I think when you hire a consultant, you want to get what, what works well, what doesn't work well. But at the end of the day, it's your search and we will do everything we can to make sure that when you sit in that room doing your final interviews, that you are struggling to pick a person because our objective is to make that a difficult decision. You should have a difficult decision once you've gone through um, this high level process of candidates and you get down to your, what we call a short list and then you interview you know, between four and three to five people that should be a difficult decision because if the work's done up front, we've identified and put candidates in front of you that all meet your criteria, that all could do the job. It all comes down to fit at that point, right? It should be about, based on everything we talked about, who are you gonna wanna work with? Who can you see connecting with your community? Who can you see connecting with your students, right? And so making sure that um, that is constantly at, at the forefront of our minds. Um, we are aggressive in our pricing <laughs> because we know every dollar that um, you spend to do something that's not directly in the classroom could impact student success. But um, the dollar amount that we've identified here is everything. So this includes travel, it includes um, all the meetings. Um, it, it is a do not exceed, which means that is the, that is the rate for everything in this process. And um, and it is about the work. So um, when you look at, I'll go through our phases in a minute and we talk about advertising, but um, the big buck is the time that we'll spend with you will be, we'll spend a lot of time with your stakeholders. We think that's a critical piece. We will spend a lot of time with you as the board. And then we will talk about what are the things that you think from an information perspective, either from your community or from other things that we can do as we talk about doing the actual search 
would, would give you the most information possible to make the best decision possible. So here's kind of a rough idea of timeline and um, it, it is a interesting time in education as most of you know. Um, there is usually a season for lack of better words when people are out looking or retiring. That has not happened during COVID. We've had really kind of a nonstop um, flow of candidates. And so you're at a good time, but it's an aggressive time to get someone hired by um, the timeline that you want. And I, my understanding is by, by July 1, right, is when you want to have your next leader in, in place. And so my thought is that if, if you did hire us, we get aggressive as far as trying to get together as soon as possible with criteria. And then, um, so criteria is where we spend time with you talking about what are the things that you want in your next leader as a board. And some of those things will come out differently as we talk to your stakeholder groups, but in order to get out and advertise and to start looking for candidates, um, it doesn't mean we don't build in things later, but in order to get out, get out quickly, we wanna know what the board wants because the board is the one that's gonna be hiring that person and you know what your committee needs as well but we still build in and feedback from the committee um, as we go through our process. Phase two um, is, it, we would do that immediately. So once we got started, we would start thinking about how can we schedule stakeholder meetings? And our stakeholder meetings are a little different than what you see with some firms. Um, we don't just hold these large meetings at um, online or send out surveys. We really try to meet with individual groups and, and, and by that I mean, most cases, we meet with both bargaining units separately. We meet with parents. We meet with students. We meet with any groups that you think that can provide a unique voice into what your community needs to, um, to help develop your, to help um, identify your next leader. And once we complete that process, we provide the board a summary of what each of those groups said um, in a hardbound copy. And um, it's for the board to use, it's for the community. But it, and it's also for the candidates that happens pretty quickly. Um, on average, I would say most districts probably have between eight and 10 stakeholder groups that we meet with. Um, but we try to get that done as quickly as possible. Um, and some districts want that done in person. Some want it done um, virtual. Um, the benefit of virtual is it can happen much quicker because you don't need as much time to do it. And you can really kind of get that done really quickly. Once we start advertising, we already are vetting candidates. So once the board says, here's what our criteria is, I send out and our team sends out um, information to all 125 of our consultants across the country. So not just the 12 to 15 that are in California. Um, it, it really goes nationwide. Here's kind of what, we're what this district is looking for. And do we know anybody that fits that kind of criteria? And then we start calling people that we have met and I think that might be a good fit. And so that process happens pretty quickly. Um, and in mo my, my gut would be your district would probably get probably 30 people that would apply for, for the opportunity is my gut guess. And then we would take that down as consultants and we would say, who are the ones that do not fit the criteria that we heard from the board? Who are the ones that kind of rise to the top and then we would spend time vetting those candidates to make sure there was nothing in their background um, that would be questionable to the board. And those would be the candidates that we would bring forward to what we call a short list. And then from that list, the board would determine who they're gonna interview. So my, my, my hope would be to be able to present that by May 10th, where the board would look at that short list. We would try to interview around the May 28th date and then you would be able to hire and present your um, new leader by the June 14th meeting. The one thing that we also do that's, that's part of the process is in order to make that sustainability piece, it's all about setting goals, right? And making sure all of you as a governance team are on the same page. And so setting the goals and objectives that are clear for everybody um, is part of that. And we recommend doing that between 30 and 60 days after your new superintendent is hired. Um, it is about a four hour, three, four hour process to do that. But to me, it's time well spent because it ensures that the superintendent knows um, what, what the board as a unit wants and they're not trying to answer 
to five individuals. And so if that's done well and kind of follow up on a regular basis and the board gives feedback to that into the evaluation process, that helps build sustainability and make sure that you're all on the same page. So I have, um, I've talked a lot. I, I can um, go into more detail, but I want to stop and see if there's any questions before I move on. Then I'll go in a little bit deeper into each one of the phases. No? Okay. Um, so the stakeholder voice piece I, I talked a little bit about. And so in addition to your individual groups, we also will do on, an online process. And the online process will do in English and in Spanish and really any other language that you want. I, I will say that in most cases, the place where we get the most feedback is when we put it online. We, on average, get 100, regardless of the size of the district, unless it's a really small district, but anything over um, 5,000 students, which is almost exactly what you're, you are with your adult ed and with your, um, your, your regular high school students, we get about, about 100 responses that 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 fill that kind of and fill that information out and give feedback on four questions. What's good about the community? What's good about the district? That's kind of part of that that piece helps recruit the candidate. And the other two pieces are what should that person know before they make the decision to come to your district? That's important because that's about fit and are they, and every district has unique things and challenges and are they the right fit for that? And then what are the characteristics, traits, attributes you want in your next leader? So those four questions we ask of every stakeholder group, and we put those same four questions online and do feedback on that. And then I already kind of mentioned that stakeholder summary report, um, but it is a great document, not only as you're going through your process, but it's also a great tool if you do any type of strategic planning afterwards, or if as you're building goals for your superintendent, you can use this document as kind of a reminder of what you heard during that process. Um, we do do a brochure. Um, our home office staff, and, I, and I, this is an important piece too, we have a home office staff that handles most of the work. So your, your, your staff is not going to be burdened with kind of handling all the clerical things. And the only thing we really need help with is logistics and getting things emailed to these groups so we can make those contacts because we don't have those. But um, your staff is busy enough already and we try to make sure we don't provide any additional burden um, for that. We will ask them for things and ask them for pictures and those kind of things to do the brochure. Um, and then I, I'm i really transparent if I'm ever asking your staff to do too much, they can just tap me and say, I'm Ben, whoa. <laughs> so that that's an important piece. Um, talked about recruiting. So the screening and the application process is kind of self-explanatory, but I think as you think about any time you're doing this, <laughs> candidates do a good job of getting references and saying to um, their references, make sure you say good things about me because most people don't put references, they're gonna say bad things about them. Um, but this is, again, this is a C-suite position. And so it's important not only to ask the people that they ask, they, they've provided for you, but we go three, three deep. So if, if they say, call my, if they're assistant superintendent, they say, well, call my superintendent. When we talk to that superintendent, we'll ask that superintendent, who are two or three other people that you think understands this person and could give also some feedback on who they are? And then when we talk to those two or three people, we say the exact same thing. We want to avoid any surprises and no one is perfect. And we're not going to, no one's going to catch everything, but we want to make sure we do everything we can to ensure that when we're sitting in front of you presenting these short list of candidates that you have as much information as possible um, about that candidate. Um, we, we do um, also um, for the short list of candidates, do a video. And the video um, is usually three questions about them. Tell us something about, um, we'll pick an education question. But um, in, in today's world, your leader could be on camera at any time. And um, I think it, it also provides a little bit more into their personality as opposed to looking at paper. And so when we get to that kind of short list of candidates that we present to you, we will send that information to the board prior to getting together 
so they can actually review and, and see those candidates. So you're going to get hard copy from paper. We're going to have reference checks. And then we're also going to have the videos that you can look at to really get a sense of who you are, of who these candidates are. Um, we will develop interview questions together. Um, once we take your criteria and your priorities as a board, I will send, I will develop questions, but it's not my search, it's your search. And then we will take those questions and we will, um, I will probably come up with between, I wanna say 25 plus questions. And then I'll ask the board, which one's kind of a line? And we will have discussions about those and talk about why we picked certain questions. And then, um, and then I, I'd recommend the board that we kind of reduce that number when you're actually reviewing, excuse me, interviewing candidates to probably 10 to 11 questions. There are some scenario things that we'll talk about if we decide to move forward that we can do with the board um, to give a different perspective of candidates. So it's not just the asking questions, getting answers, but also some scenario things that are um, actually, I think, more telling than sometimes you get from people that could be really great interviewers. Um, I think that really covers that. Um, the, the last piece I, I think is important. We, we are confident in our process. Um, so phase five, we talk, we, I mentioned we do do work. We work with the board and superintendent. We don't charge additional for this. Most firms do. Um, but we think it's an important piece to enhance that sustainability. And um, we do help you develop performance objectives for your next leader. And then um, we provide a two-year guarantee. And we were the first ones to do that. I know other people are starting to do it now, but that two-year guarantee means that if for any reason um, your leader leaves, um, so if it's one year and 363 days, um, we will come back and do the search for free. Um, the only cost that would be would be if there's any additional advertising or, or travel. Um, I think, I, mean, I won't talk about additional services because I don't wouldn't really think that's relevant at this point. Um, but I'll say the key takeaways for our process is transparency. We really want to make sure you have sustainable leadership, um, the high involvement of your stakeholders, and making sure that um, you are all aligned and moving in the same directions as a, govern as a governance team. So I will stop talking and I'll open up for questions. Thank you. One of my main concerns when we got the proposal was no set price. It was going to be set by the superintendent and the board and you guys at the end. But now you, put in a, now you put in a definite price. That's yes, yeah, so I apologize. There wasn't a set price in there. Um, but that is the, that, that price you saw, the 16.9, is um, the set price. Okay. I feel better about that. <laughs> I would too. I wouldn't want to do something without a set price. Uh, are we getting started late? Um, are you getting started late? I In think you're right at the door. Because I, I, we, I have, we have uh, one, two, three openings that I know of, and there's an interim in one of our districts. So I'm worried about getting good qualified people down here. Uh, like our teachers, many of them start here and they're here for a few years, and then they go to San Diego because the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. They forget that the water bill is also higher. Yeah, <laughs> Trustee Jones, I, I, I have the same concerns about every search right now because, as I mentioned at the very beginning, it is a it's a challenge being, it's, there are a lot of openings across the state. And so um, we have an aggressive process. I don't think we have one that's, it, it's a fine line between being too aggressive and not giving enough time to do the background checks and not enough time to do the um, advertising. But I think we're in a safe window. If we were, if we were sitting here talking and it was May, I, I would be definitely concerned. Um, but I have to tell you that the kind of the dynamics, I'm kind of saying two things here, but the dynamics of, of a set period of change, we, we, we really haven't had a stop in our season. I don't think you're going to have a challenge finding good candidates. You're, you're, I'm not just saying this to, to butter you up, but your, your board has a good reputation. 
And that's critical, right? Because a superintendent, no matter where it is, doesn't want to work for a board that they're concerned about their career because careers are, can be made and broken by boards. Um, and I've seen a couple of your board members at conferences and can speak to that just personally. Um, so I think you're going to have good candidates. I think that it's about really making sure that looking at their previous record um, and will, will they be a right fit? Right? And, that, and that's the biggest piece, I think. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. Would you be able to share the, the percentages of the retainability slide? I'm sorry? The slide where you had the percentages of the... Sure. Yeah, 80% at five years. Um, sorry, I just went by it too fast. Yeah. You passed. There we go. You passed. Go. Thank you. I have a question, um, Absolutely. Mr. Johnson, and, and thank you for um, a very comprehensive presentation. Um, I appreciate that um, and, and kind of really researching our board and our district. Um, on your executive summary, um, you said it states that if desired, you would recruit non-traditional candidates. Can you- yeah of what a non-traditional candidate looks like? So I like that question. So some, I'll, I'll give you the extreme of one and I'll kind of answer it. So I, I worked with a district that only wanted someone that had classroom experience. They had to be a teacher for three years, no, excuse me, five years. And they wanted this traditional path of um, experience in education. But if I had a CEO that developed ABC company and I, thought they were a wow candidate and they met your criteria, I would say to the board at least interviewed. So philosophically, the recruiting process should be like this to me, right? Like an upside down funnel, right? Bring as many candidates in that meet your criteria. Don't restrict it up here too much because you never know who you're gonna see out there. And, and, I, know, and I know several candidates, superintendents out there that never worked in a classroom they came through like the business office or they were counselors um and so being mindful that there are a variety of candidates that could based on what you needed meet that criteria and then when you get to the interview process then you can determine or even the screening process you could determine i don't want to see them um but not restricting it so much that you whittle down the pool too early and, and so and then even thinking about using verbiage of um, preferred as opposed to required and those kind of things as you think about what's good for you in your process. I, I would be really like this, especially now for anyone, because um, you, you never know who's going to be out there that could be a wild candidate for you. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Do you, I guess I see that you go night nationwide and everywhere, but will there be a local pool too? Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, we, we, we say nationwide because we're a nationwide search firm and mm -hmm. there'll be candidates that we'll get that'll, that could be from uh, Chicago or Colorado or whatever. Um, but if the board said, no, we only want candidates from California, then we would adhere to that. But I, I okay. think that, I think that, as I said before, if you great leadership is great leadership. A and at times in California, we think we're so different. Um, but in, in most cases, we're not that different, right? When, when you're talking about what it takes to lead a school district. Yes, there's some uniqueness to the education system in, in, in the state, um, but we also have many candidates that leave California, go to other states, and they want to come back. And so I think just being mindful of the fact that if, if you focus on the criteria and what you think you need in your next leader, and then seeing who best fits that, um, I, I think not closing it all to non-California candidates is good for districts. 
And sometimes you get a, just a different lens and a view of doing things that you, you, you may not have heard about because you've been in California your whole career. Okay. No, and, and it's, it's more, you know, I've been on boards for 20 years and I, know. I remember <laughs> before, <laughs> before the, the, the um, age of Google and Google Maps, I remember there was some superintendents and some general managers that saw California and came down here, heard about Heber Beach, Heber Beach mm -hmm. is desert, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of but nowadays that, that doesn't worry me as much because, you know, there's Google Farm, there's Google Maps and stuff, so they need to do their homework too. The, they, they do, and, and we work with you and your, so that's part of the things too. We work, we build a brochure. That'll be all included about as us? part of the recruiting oh, okay. tool for the brochure too. About us? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the brochure is really your marketing tool. So when we work with your staff, we'll create a brochure that um, will talk about the community, the demographics, all those kind of important pieces. And those will get sent out to um, prospective candidates as well. Okay. Okay. Another question. That was my only question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, my question is on the background checks. You said that you only do the background check for the selected candidate, but there is an option uh, with an additional fee of doing the background checks for all of the finalists. What would be the benefit of doing the background checks for all the finalists? So um, that verbiage reads strange. So there's a we do reference checks and we do that kind of formal, I mean, that asking people reference checks on candidates, but then there is a formal um, background check for your finalists that, that is um, more comprehensive checks. Um, they have to sign a document, it checks credit report, it checks criminal background, all those kind of things. We usually only do that for your finalists, but I have had some districts that say, look, here's our number one and number two, and just in case number one, doesn't take the offer, um, we want to be prepared. And I think that's a good idea, right? If you're really close on two candidates, have them both do it and say, you know, we have two final, you both are finalists. Um, this has to be done. It's go, go through the process and the board's using it as a decision-making process. And it's a nominal cost for the additional one. I, I don't remember. I think it's a hundred dollars or something like that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, Bart? I'm pondering. <laughs> That's a scary. It I'm is. Right there. <laughs> I think he's answered all my questions. Thank you. Anyone else, Eric? No, um, I, I really like the transparency with the retention rate stats. Um, I also really like the two-year guarantee. Thank you. Okay. Um, Carlos. No, I don't, I don't have I any don't, questions. I don't like it when Carlos moment. is quiet. <laughs> uh -huh. No, I'm, I'm all right. No, no questions okay. really at, at this moment. No. Thank you, okay. Trustee Hernandez. Maria, yeah. anything else? Just one question. Uh, how long do you advertise before it closes? Uh, so the online, once we come to an agreement, would happen immediately. Um, and then um, EdJoin has these cutoff periods that are, are, are kind of funky. So whenever their timeline happens, we would advertise. But, but I will, in their hard copy paper, but I will tell you that most people look at the online stuff and, and that happens pretty quickly. The timeline I kind of projected is about four and a half weeks um, to five weeks at, at minimum. Um, and um, that doesn't include the um, email stuff that we do. So as mentioned, we, and I didn't mention all of it, and I apologize. We email to all of our consultants. That's, I say 115, 125, because that number can change with consultants. Um, and then we also email to 
every person that's ever applied for any position um, within our system. So that's close to a thousand potential candidates that we email um, that opportunity as well to. Um, and that's how I would say we get most of our initial interest is through our efforts because um, we're, we're ahead of Ed joining at Cal as far as reaching out to people. And then we each individual start calling people that we think would be a good fit. So you guys do have like a, a, a cachet, I want to say, of people that are always like in the mix. So I, I, I don't like using that example. Um, mm -hmm. I know what you're saying in the mix. But what, what we do have is we have people that have applied for things. So when I think, and I'm, uh, this may sound really petty getting into wordsmithing, but when I think of a cachet, I think of like, here's a group of people and we're just moving them around and around and around. So I don't want to be clear. We, we don't do that. I, I, I would never put, I'll say a couple things here. I would never put you with someone just to put you with someone. Oh, okay. I would never tell you to settle. I, I, as a board member, it happened to me as a board member where someone that was doing our search said, that's all. They didn't say settle, right? That, of course, they didn't use that verbiage, but they said, there's no one else out there. This is the best you can do right now. That's just not true. So it could be a timing piece. It could be an advertising piece. If that ever happened, I would tell the board, let's, let's go back out again, get an interim for a couple of months, but let's go back out again. If you aren't all sitting in that boardroom with the finalists, and quite frankly, this, the finalist means... The, the, the four or five people you decide to interview, if at least you're not having a difficult time between two or three people, we didn't do a good enough job. And if you aren't all going like this about can't you're fine with the can't person you pick that. And sometimes it means somebody really wants Tom and somebody really else wants um, Jane. Right. But there should be people that you're all wowed about during that process. If we've made a mistake and haven't done that, I want you all to know, to say to me, I don't think I like any of these candidates and we need to go back out. That's what you do as opposed to you never settle because the impact to your students and to the forward movement of your district, um, you can't get that time back and it, it will, it'll hurt kids. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't get a medal for, for giving you bad candidates. And so I, I want to make sure that you get the best person that's going to lead your district moving forward. I do have one more question. Sure. And, and I know you've probably heard it a couple of times during this um, today is, um, you know, we're on a tight timeline. We'll kind of feel like, you know, we need to do this quickly. Um, how, responsive we, we need we need you to be very responsive in terms of messages or if we need to talk to you or you know we have questions about something I, I think being responsive to the board is going to be crucial um and then how flexible once if you know if we decide to go with you how flexible are we to make changes once the process has started oh great great question so first of all um and i'm glad you asked it because every board is different, right? And so some boards want the board president to do everything. Some boards all want to be really engaged. We will talk about that, about how you want to work with me. But I quite frankly like it best when every board member knows they can pick up the phone and call or text me whenever, right? Because the board president, regardless of who it is, their role is really facilitating meetings, right? It's not just to run the whole search and different board members have different questions, different needs. And one person can't facilitate that. So everyone, I personally like when people all have my phone number. I, I try to, so I'm really high level. I, I, I try to recognize that um, board need, board members need updates. So I try to give high level updates. Well, let me, let me go back and say this. We'll come up with a calendar um, for key things, like the things we talked about um, and the key points for the board would be when we're going to present candidates, how are we going to go over questions? Those kind of things um, are important. But as far as being flexible, um, I'm pretty easy to get along with. I, I, I think I've been a board member, so I recognize that, um, that you're all usually, most board members are usually all busy with their lives too. And so being able to accommodate, I, I quite frankly like to do 
I think it's more effective at times when board members, when we have discussions um, that aren't aligned to a board meeting, because board meetings are usually so packed anyways. And, and if it's like most of the time you've worked a full day and then you come home and you go to a board meeting and you're wiped out and then to add on search stuff, I typically find those things work better at separate times. And um, so I'm flexible with the board once, but if the board asked me, I would say, you know what, if we're doing criteria, let's do it on a Saturday morning at, you know, we can do it by zoom and we can do it at 10 o'clock in the morning and be done by noon. Right. And the, those kind of things to not wait for just a board meeting date to get those things done. Cause to your comment, that keeps you confined. The only, the only, con the only thing you have to do as far as a regular board meeting is officially announce your next leader. That's the only date that has to be doing a board meeting. I, I, think interviewing works better. If you look at my timeline, um, interviewing is is better on a weekend. Um, it means your candidates aren't trying to get to you after work. And um, so really just trying to think about what's best for you as a board. But um, I'm, I gave you a long answer, but I'm really flexible. I'm not usually this verbose. So, um, but Thank yes. you. Thank you. On, on May 2nd, you have a meeting plan to meet with us. And that would that be that's the criteria we want to use to, for the qualifications for the superintendent? Uh, that's what I put down. I, I, I was thinking I said May 2nd. No, that, that would be April 2nd. Sorry. So that, that should be April 2nd. That's yeah. Next. That's next week. April 2nd, not May 2nd. Sorry. OK, thank you. I feel better already. Yes. April 2nd. Thank you and for what, calling that out. I wouldn't have. Yeah. And what can we do it? as a board to be prepared for that meeting? It, it, it's up to the board. I mean, I, I, you know, sometimes boards, if they have this agendized, they prove us tonight, but it's not agendized, we would have done it tonight, right? So I can be really flexible with that. Um, quite frankly, um, if the board wanted to do it tomorrow, we could start criteria tomorrow, really, if you wanted to in the morning, if, it, if there was enough, I don't think there's enough time from a calendar perspective, but I'm just to kind of put that out there. I'm really flexible with that kind of stuff. Thank you. I'm not going to be in there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mr. Johnson, I have a question. So um, my next one was going to be May 2nd. So that, that's why I was like, wait, what? No, April that was, that's, that's my here. typo. That should yeah, say April so, 2nd. Yes. So Sorry. We're good. Um, my, my other question is um, what experience or what recent superintendents or districts have, has, um, has, this well, as McPherson worked with in the Imperial Valley, what's the recent the recent districts you've worked with the Imperial Valley or past experiences with the Imperial Valley districts um, for McPherson? Um, now you're gonna test. I, I think it's in the book. I'm not looking at it right now, so I can't answer you off the top of my head. Um, it's Calexico. Calexico. Thank you. My age at times. Uh, for the most re the recent. Superintendent of Calexico? No, I think I saw um, 17, 18. Yes. Yeah. I saw something like that. I was way back. I just thought I couldn't answer your question because I'm not sure who's there now. That's why I, I didn't know the answer to that question. It's on page 32, Carlos, um, towards the middle where it says. Uh, it says Calexico Unified School District, search here 2017-18. And that's the only district from the Imperial Valley that's been well, that's with McPherson? I, I can't, I, I really can't answer that question for oh, okay. you. I, I don't know the, I mean, I, I could say, I don't think everything's in our bind, in the binder. So I can't really answer that question for you. And I don't want to make something up. Hey, uh, on interviews, it's said to be one per day. No, no, I, I, I think depending. Hey, hey, 26. Well, it's yeah. two pages. The right hand number, the middle number. I, I wouldn't do that. That's that's what they do in other states. They sometimes do one interview per day. I don't think that's effective. Um, I, I typically recommend doing three a day. Um, depending on how many you get, if you have four candidates, then you can split up two and two. Um, but, but one a day, um, is, 
is because they do other things in those in those processes that aren't really aligned to what we do in California. So if we if you had four candidates, um, I'll give you an example. Probably better give you an example. So if you had four candidates, um, sometimes what we do is we do meal meals with superintendents, right? So we'll say two board members go to breakfast with candidate. I'm, I'm going to use names because if I say candidate and B, I'll forget. Two candidates go to breakfast with John. Two can two board members. Two board members go to breakfast with John. Two board members go to breakfast with Paul, and then for lunch you guys switch, right? And then so there's the candidates that had breakfast are now having lunch, and in between that time you could you would have an interview, right? So it would be breakfast interview, switch off meals, and then and then the board president would have coffee in between the day with those other candidates. So every board member would have a formal well together would have a, have a have a um, a regular board session with, with those candidates, but they would also have two board members would have a meal with those candidates and not an interview, right? It's just to get to know the, that candidate in a less formal structure. Um, and then the other piece that we haven't talked about, um, but I think it's important is some, some boards um, want to use a community panel. And what a community panel consists of is usually um seven to nine people, um, maybe a little bit more, but not much more than 11 that would provide from their perspective, the um, strengths or any areas of concern of those candidates. And usually that representation is one member from each bargaining unit. Most districts have two, that's why, but if you have more, whatever that would be. And then each board member gets to select a person so that would bring your number seven. And then it could be um, someone internally from the district, but that's all up to the board. We would talk through if the board wanted to do that. The, the, the benefit of that process is, is that it's not anybody ranking the members, right? It's, they're not ranking, we like this person best, we like that person. No, that, I'm, very, uh, I'm very tough in that process. <laughs> It's really about just what were the things that were consensus strengths, consensus concerns of those candidates. Um, and then um, that information is given to the board by me um, once the board has had their deliberation. And you said someone would make uh, recommendations to meet the spouse? Um, I, I never do that. I, I, I don't see any value in that. I, I worry about the HR issue of bringing someone's spouse in. That, what if they don't thank, have a spouse? Thank, thank you. Yeah. So um, I, I'm just going by what you had in your brochure. Yeah, they, 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 the, the brochure, I apologize, is encompassing what we do across the country. And um, I, I would never do that. <laughs> The, the spouse thing is once you've made them an offer and they're hired and then the board says we're going to go out to dinner after the first board meeting but I, I would never do that as part of the process yeah i mean in some states we have a finalist um i'll say this too in some states the finalists um have to be publicly announced yeah which is crazy in my opinion right you just got rid of everybody's confidentiality and some boards are mean if you're looking for other jobs and we don't do that here either um mr johnson i had i had a question for i was just curious like for the california consultants only if you call um, me ben <laughs> everybody uh, can call me ben no mr oh uh, okay yeah, yeah i just i call everybody by their last name i don't oh, know it's just how i was raised Same Same teacher. yeah yeah i'm a teacher so <laughs> it's just it just comes Tell out the way I'll, I'll try time. my best <laughs> my question is for the california consultants i was just wondering those consultants uh, at the time i know that you have like a pool you know wide range pool of candidates but i was just curious like from the wide range pool i'm sure just through you know just networking and meeting people i know i know other consultant places um, they have like trainings and leadership roles where they work with superintendents that are interested in being superintendents and they yeah. learn, they have meetings with them and training. So they kind of learn their skill set early on in their careers. So I was wondering, do, does McPherson do that also? 
Um, you know, I know it's nationwide, but do the California consultants work with people that are interested in being superintendents early on in, in their career and they have trainings to get to know them, to kind of know them, not just by, you know, the resume, not just by the search, like that they just get them by the search and filter them from the search, that they actually kind of know people that are already in California that are interested in being superintendent and they have trainings. Because I know other I know other firms also do that where they, they work with superintendents, have trainings with superintendents, have discussions with superintendents or aspiring superintendents. So do California consultants for McPherson do that as well? Some type of um, trainings with aspiring superintendents and current superintendents? So it's a great question. So there are several superintendent organizations um, that do an excellent job of, uh, I just spoke at one in um, San Diego earlier this year, um, but it's usually the organization that brings in people to do that. So yes, we know the same people that every, we, we know the organizations that do those, those trainings we don't do those trainings in California ourselves, but those expertise organizations do. Um, and um, yeah, I, I know people that run those workshops. Um, I, I've recently done a couple. And so we, it, it's important that those networks happen. And so we're aware of those people. And we have connections in all those organizations as well. Thank you. You're welcome. I keep looking up because my big screen is above me and I keep forgetting my cameras here. <laughs> You're all good. I have I have four screens in front of me right now. So nice. I feel you. he's actually playing uh, Nintendo. I was, I was yeah, gonna say what game are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> Just no, kidding. no, of course I wouldn't play. Never, never. <laughs> I don't okay. have any more questions. Anybody else? I'm done. Oh, you're done, Eric? I think that meant it's safe. I think he's playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's running around after his son. <laughs> and then, and then. Okay, do so. Um, so, Ma Madam President, let me just provide a little. Um, Mm -hmm. support for the board for, to make a decision here. So what is presented on the agenda? Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for the presentation and the question and answer. That was very helpful for our board members. Um, what's presented is actually are both contracts. And so if if there's a, and what's first is this one, is the McPherson Jacobson contract. Um, if this one is decided to be act upon, if someone motions to approve it, there can be a vote. Um, if, if it's a positive vote, then we would just go through the process to do a negative vote for the other contract or vice versa. So that would be the procedural order is to proceed with a consideration of the McPherson Jacobson contract. And then we'll know what to do with the um, second agenda item. And if the board wants me to step off to make their deliberations easier, I'd be more than happy to do that. Well, I think Mr. Johnson, what we'll probably do, unless there's any more questions of you, we'll probably um, keep you on the call and move you into our, uh, off of a panelist where you are speaking to a participant. So you're still here with us uh, and we're not dropping you. So, um, and then if necessary, a, you can be pulled back up to a panelist level to answer a question. Does that sound reasonable? That's great. Thank you. Okay. So Mr. Barrera in IT, would you take Mr. Johnson? Ben, thank you for that. Um, if you'll move him into the, uh, the participant group. All right, cool. I was wondering, I was like, are we going to have discussion or not going to have discussion? But yeah, cool. I, I see. I think Rich is on here also. So I believe Mr. Thome is also on at the same level as Mr. Johnson. He is a participant, not a panelist. So if there was a question when that agenda item came up, I believe someone from Leadership Associates would be available to answer a question for the agenda, agenda item two. So what's, what's available to the board at this moment is consideration of the McPherson-Jacobson contract. So are we ready to make a motion at this point, Diana? Uh, I want a discussion, yeah. Some, so let's, something that um, could... uh -huh. um, I believe we would have to do a motion on one of them, no second, but just open it up for discussion, correct? Yes. 
for the purpose of discussion, you make the yes. motion. You make the motion to accept or deny whatever. It doesn't matter who you, well, the first one up is McPherson, right? So, okay. yeah. We'll meet, uh, do we accept McPherson and Jacob Jacobson for just make a motion? We open it up for discussion. So I would make a motion to accept the contract with McPherson and Jacobson. Okay. Okay. And Carlos, you say I, I'd like to discuss. Yeah, I'd like to discuss. I guess what, what troubles me with this, and it was the reason I asked that question is because when I saw that on, on that page, I just wanted to see his answer was um, that they've only worked with one district in the Imperial Valley. And then that one district that they worked with, that's the superintendent that, <coughs> well, we know how that has gone over time um, in Calexico. And then we've had those discussions and how that's gone. And so I guess for me, that's like an eye open, that's an eye opener for me in terms of if there's so much transparency and things like that, it's like, why has nobody else ever used them in the Imperial Valley recently? And then, um, and we, I mean, we all know what's gone on with Calexico and then the superintendent that happened at that time, they, we had one that got fired and then we had one that also addressed all this stuff due to the board. So in my mind, I, that's just alarming to me. And that's interesting. Like I know statistics are always very persuasive, but at the same time, I'm just looking at in terms of Imperial Valley, they they um, they haven't they haven't worked with in Pro Valley very often. The one that they only have worked with is Calexico. So that's just something that that caught my eye. And the other thing that catches my eye too is just that um, I know other other like leadership and associates. I know other consulting firms also do those trainings where they actually get to meet um, superintendents and see their skill set from early on and get to know what they can do, what they provide, their personalities, how they respond in workshops. And so they get to see them not just as an interview or as a person filling out an application that's interested. And I, I find that like more personable in terms of learning like a superintendent skill set from the early on how they communicate with other colleagues versus just, and they don't do that. So I guess that's just one thing that stuck out to me that others had that they didn't have um, for me of, of what I noticed. And, and, and that's somewhat concerning to me. Um, and, and that there was no really answer for it. it was just like we know the people but we don't do any of the, our california consultants don't do any of those trainings and yet the other ones do and they get to know people early on in their career and get to know them more personal and the more you get to know a person the more you can see how they would fit with the district and and that that i feel is important but um that's just that's just highlights that i noticed for discussion I, th I think it's important to note that they submitted their application in collaboration with CSBA. And I know that um, getting a partnership with CSBA for CSBA to endorse you is not something that's taken lightly. So I think that has, um, that has a lot of backing for me, um, kind of says that CSBA has kind of looked at them and reviewed them and reviewed their work. And for them to actually endorse them, I think has a lot of weight in my eyes. Anybody else? And then I guess for also at the end of the day too, the thing that always stuck in my mind in the last meeting was the comment Dr. Andrews said that at the end of the day, I guess there's not really a, a loose situation in this because like Dr. Andrews said, when he was going for superintendent, um, you know, they looked at, he looked at all places. He didn't just look at one. Right. So at the end of the day, I mean, whether we go with McPherson or another one or even leadership and associates, I feel like the ones that are interested are going to find, you know, find our district either way. So at least in that situation, in hindsight, I feel like, I'm not too worried overall um, for that. The only thing that, again, that concerns me is even with the endorsement of CSBA, if they're so endorsed, why doesn't other districts use them? And why haven't they used them recently from the Imperial Valley? Like recently, even Calexico is looking for a superintendent now. Why didn't they hire them again? 
if they were so good. They went, they went with ESS. Yeah. So why they didn't they with come what? with ESS? Yeah. So if if McPher if they were pleased with McPherson, why didn't they hire them for their recent superintendent search? That to me, some I'm just saying that that's what I keep thinking about. That's what I keep thinking about. I'm like, if I get endorsements and stuff, but in my mind, it's like, why didn't they hire him again then? If and then why has no other Imperial Valley district chosen them? That's probably a rhetorical question that we can't answer. Yeah, 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 rhetorical. That's strictly rhetorical. It's just in hindsight, that's what I'm thinking about um, is out of all districts and a bunch of districts are looking for superintendent and we're one of the later ones. How come there, how come nobody's gotten them yet? Well, Raleigh Elementary didn't, didn't go with leadership associates again. That's true. They went with the county. Yeah. I believe, right? Yeah. Anybody else? Did I lose everybody? Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, I can, hear, can you. hear you. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, that's all. That's the comments I have. It's just what I noticed. So just as a point of order, there's a, a motion on the table that has not been seconded. I'll second to approve. The, and the motion uh, was, the motion was Maria to accept. To accept the contract with McPherson and Johnson. Okay. He, Eric, you're, that's the one you're, you're seconding? Correct. Okay, so I have a motion to accept McPherson and Jacobson um, for our superintendent search by Mr. Nell, second by Mr. Uh, Rodriguez. I was about to say Hernandez. <laughs> so all in favor? Aye. Uh, let's do, since we're on Zoom, let's go through. Let me go through. Okay, so Peinado. Aye. Uh, Jones? Aye. Hernandez? Nay. Rodriguez? Aye. Uh, Garcia Ruiz? Mm, nay, but still. <laughs> okay, so it passes 3-2. So, uh, President Garcia Ruiz, we just need to address um, the second agenda item, and mm -hmm. I don't think the board wants to create a conflict of interest. So, I uh, there's one there for presentation, and uh, the board would need to process that accordingly. Okay, so agreement between leadership and associates in the Centralina High School District to conduct a superintendent search. Do I hear a motion to accept or decline? I mean. Okay. I need a second to decline uh, leadership and associates. Second to decline leadership and associates. Second with Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor? Do we go roll call again, Peinado? Aye. Jones? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Hernandez? Nay. Garcia Ruiz, aye. You can help Okay. Anything? And do we need uh, Mr. Johnson back on? If you'd like to speak with Mr. Johnson again, that'd be appropriate. And uh, uh, Mr. Barrera, could you elevate him back to a panelist, please? Welcome back. 
Thank, thank you, board. I appreciate it. Um, and your concerns are duly noted. I do want to clarify, and I probably misunderstood uh, Trustee Hernandez's question about our firm. Our, our consultants do do um, trainings, but our firm does not. So, uh, so when you ask the question, uh, and I apologize, I should have clarified, but when you ask the question, do our consultants do any kind of training and do they know candidates um, yes, many of our, 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 our consultants do those things, but um, our firm is not the ones that, 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 that does. they do those through the organizations that I identified earlier. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Um, so I, I thank you again. I, I think next steps would be to try to work with the board um, to talk about criteria. And then, um, and then I think really as we talked about the education piece and communication piece um, and really trying to work to get a calendar put together as soon as possible so we can move forward. Um, and I, I will say that um, we are honored to be doing your search. And, and then I want to talk about too how much, what things you want in person, what things you want, are you comfortable virtually? So we can probably do that. Uh, I don't, we don't have an agenda, so we can't technically do it now, but I think scheduling it for as soon as possible to have those discussions would be beneficial. So uh, let me jump in here just for a minute. So Mr. Johnson, um, we're glad, Ms. Taylor and I are glad to facilitate that with you and the board for upcoming closed session meetings to plan for those types of discussions. Um, also, I am the quasi uh, webmaster. So we'll, there's a superintendent search page that we'll update. Ms. Jones, are you smiling about that? Yeah, that's my other job. Uh, we talk all the time about a PIO. Um, so, so uh, anyway, so I, I'll facilitate that for you. Okay. Um, any other questions for me? Anything that? I will when we meet again. All right. That's good. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the meeting is adjourned at 7-12. Thank you, thank, you, thank you, everybody, for coming in on Fridays. Like, okay. Have a good, great weekend, everybody. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Bye. Have a great weekend. Later, guys. Hey, don't forget uh, job fair tomorrow at the STEM building. Where for? <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Later. Bye.